I recently found out that there are over 30 animals in Minecraft. The problem is most of them are thousands of blocks away or hiding in the depths of the ocean, so they never get seen. But today I'm going to change that by building the ultimate zoo complete with custom enclosures and housing every animal, all in Minecraft Hardcore. Now to be honest, this is by far my biggest project I've ever done in this world. It's taken me more than 5 weeks to complete and more than 700 days in Minecraft, so please don't judge me. Maybe subscribe to the channel and give the video a thumbs up instead. So before I get started, we need to find the perfect spot. Like this island right opposite my base and industrial area that we built in last episode. I mean, it's close enough to base and we've got plenty of room for building. Let's go over the plan. First, I guess I need to clear this forest and then I'm going to connect a bridge to the island, which will be the only access point to the zoo. I then want to build a nice big entrance to section off the island and then give it a nice big unique name, you know, something like Zoo because no one else is using that, right? Once that's all in place, I'll start building the enclosures for all the animals, making sure to leave plenty of space for a pathway. Each enclosure will of course be nicely decorated and completely custom and unique to the animal inside it. However, for all the underwater animals, including the turtles, frogs and axolotls, I want to build a nice aquarium with a huge octopus, and maybe the mouth could be the entrance. And of course, there will be plenty of decorations along the way. Man, that is a lot of trees. So, let's get to work. With the area cleared, I guess the best place to start is the bridge. I decided to go with a brick walkway, which I think will extend throughout the zoo. I also mixed in some granite for some variation. And for the walls, I added some pillars, which extended down underneath the bridge to make a bit of an archway. At this point, the bridge was looking very grey, so I added in some polished granite for a little bit of colour. And then finally, I finished up with some details and added in some iron bars for railings. Okay, that's not bad. I'm not 100% sure on the design just yet, but I think it works. I'll see how it looks once we get the entrance all in place, but at least we have an access point to the island now. With the bridge all in place, I decided to start planning out the layout for the zoo. This step usually is time consuming, but it always makes the build process much easier in the long run. I started by planning out the entrance and then moved on to organizing the layout for the enclosures making sure that I kept space for a pathway through the middle so that I could have animals on both sides. At the same time, I was also trying to keep in mind which animals would go inside each enclosure. This allowed me to make them a good size for each animal. One of the great things about planning is that it always helps you come up with new ideas and inspiration. One of those ideas for me was adding a raised area for some more enclosures in the aquarium. I feel this would help add more scale to the zoo and make the area stand out when looking here from a distance. Okay, that really was a huge job, but at least most of the area is all planned out now. I still need to plan out a few more enclosures to go somewhere up here, but first, I need some name tags for all the mobs. Ah, oh, seriously, Rick? Only 12 name tags at a time? I thought you was an expert. Well, I guess I might as well repair my tools while I wait for him to restock. So... And before I forget, let's drink some milk. I really do not want to be setting off any raids right now. And after several trades, I'm up to 57 name tags, which should be enough to keep us going for a while. And I'm getting pretty low on rockets again, so I think it's about time we restock. Now, with over 30 enclosures to build, I'm gonna need stacks and stacks of sand for glass. Hmm, 
That certainly won't do. What about red sand? That's probably still not going to be enough. I didn't even check my actual glass supply. Man, I'm so dumb sometimes. Okay, along with all the sand, that might just about do it. Let's throw that in there and switch on the ovens. Now, I think I want the glass to be stained black, so... Wow, that actually stained more glass than I expected. Although, I have no idea if it's enough, but it will do for now. Luckily, I have tons and tons of raw copper, but smelting it, that's going to take a while. While I was waiting, I spent some time gathering a bunch of materials, including jungle logs, leaves, bamboo, mud, mangrove logs, packed ice, snow blocks, and I came across a mushroom island. So I gathered some mushrooms and some mycelium. Not that there was much else on offer to gather. Seriously, I feel like I've been waiting forever, and so far, only seven blocks have oxidized. Seven. Like, how long does this stuff take? You know what, I guess I should just get a start with building. Now that is looking pretty awesome, I like it a lot. But now the inside is looking rather empty. So next up, let's get to work on those pens, which means I'm going to need some leads. Let's grab some leather, that should be more than enough. Ah oh man, I am such a noob. Of course you don't need leather for leads, you need string and slime balls. Let's just pretend I never touched this, like it never happened. Well, I'm certainly not going to run out of string anytime soon. And only five slime balls. Wait a minute, wait a minute, hold up, hold up. I think I might have. Yes, slime blocks, almost forgot. Just a few should do the trick. Let's craft some leads. And now I need to find some animals. Gathering the chickens, sheep, and pigs was pretty easy. I mean, there's plenty of them everywhere. But I also found some trader llamas. Seriously, these guys were so rude, they just wouldn't stop spitting at me. And they even killed my sheep. Luckily, I had no problems finding more. Now, with a bunch of animals, I got straight to work on the enclosures. Starting with a chicken pen, I added in some walls and then built a simple little coop to shelter them from the rain. I tried to keep the design pretty simple but decorative at the same time. I mean, you guys know how much I love my decorations. Next up was the pig pen, and I wanted this one to look a little bit messy, so I switched the grass for some mud and podzol. Then I built a small custom tree with a small shelter to the side, and then finished it off with some small details and a little water trough. The sheep pen was a little bit bigger, so I made it a bit more compact by building a little barn using mangrove wood for the roof. I added a small wheat field to the side and then a few hay bales for some details. I know it's only three pens, but I kind of love the way this one is shaping up. There's plenty of color and the overall design just feels very fitting with the area. And I'm getting a little low on food, so let's quickly grab some golden carrots. And next up, I think I'm going to go for the wolf enclosure. I started this enclosure by texturing the ground and added in a small pond for the wolves to drink from. I then built them a small cave for shelter. 
I didn't want to build it too big as the walls would probably climb it and then escape the pen and we certainly didn't want that. I also added in some custom trees and then decorated the pen with some leaves, dripstone, logs and even some bamboo which added a great bit of colour to the build. Okay, that one's looking pretty cool and i am got to be honest, I really love the addition of the bamboo. It just, I don't know, it just adds a little sparkle of colour. All it needs now is some wolves and then the pen is complete. I spent about an hour trying to track down the wolves and getting them back to the enclosure, so it took me a bit longer than I expected. I also saw a wolf do this animation for the first time. Is that a new thing? Because I've never seen that before. That's four wolves now, so let's put a name tag on them and this pen's complete. Now this place is looking pretty cool, but there is something that I have to do. Let's grab this, make some red dye, turn this into white dye. Now we can craft pink dye and we can go boom. And we have a pink sheep. Sorry, but it had to be done. Although, kind of makes me want to do it in every color now. Okay, maybe later, as right now, I need some rabbits for the next enclosure. Hold up, like, where's the llamas gone? I didn't think name tagged animals could despawn. Well, that sucks. Heading out for a search for rabbits turned into the craziest journey ever. You see, finding the rabbits was not the problem. I mean, I found plenty. However, Getting them home safely was almost impossible. After many hours, I finally come to the conclusion that the spruce and snow biomes were far too dangerous because the wolves and foxes would keep attacking them. I even brought some foxes back thinking my bunnies would be safe behind a fence. Yeah, I know, I'm stupid. So I let the foxes go and finally, after an entire day, I finally got some back home from the meadow. And this time I had a few more than I expected. Wow, I can't believe I actually made it back with so many of them. Looks like we might have more bunnies than any other animal. This time though, I'm completely blocking them in to make sure they are safe. That should do. Now nothing can get them, not even me. Now with all the excitement out of the way, let's do a few more enclosures. I think these ones will be for the rabbits, donkeys and the mules, and maybe this one for the cows. So let's get building. For the rabbit's pen, I started by making a simple little hut for some shelter and then added a small little carrot field to the side. I used iron bars to wall off the back of the pen and then added a small custom tree for some decoration. For the donkey and mules enclosure, I textured the grass and then added a small basic pond. I also built a small barn using mangrove wood again for the roof. I then finished off the build with some decorations and added a few small custom trees to bring some life to the enclosure. For the cow's pen, I started with a small barn, this time using oak and spruce for the roof. I textured the ground and then added a few leaves and little bushes. The pen was actually pretty big, so I added in a few custom trees to fill in some of the space. And overall, I think the zoo is really starting to shape up now. And now the pens are all in place, let's add the animals. I'm going to start with the bunnies as they were the hardest to get. And I'm not taking any chances so they can all go on leads. Oh my gosh, look, there is so many of them. But I must say, it feels good to finally have them in place. Next up, we have our cows, and these guys shouldn't give us any trouble. There we go. And for the next enclosure, I'm going to need to find some donkeys and horses. Finding and taming more horses and donkeys was rather slow, but not really that hard. I even managed to breed a few into some mules, and I gotta say, the babies are pretty cute. While gathering some of the horses, one of them did randomly disappear. A bit later on, I managed to find him, but inside a tree. I mean, it was pretty funny. I have no idea how he got there. At this point, I felt like I was on a roll, so I decided to try and hunt down the next animal, which was located in the jungle and fairly rare. Yes, I'm talking about the panda. And seriously, why can't we put these guys on leads? You see, it took me searching five jungles before I actually found some pandas and that took me an entire day. I didn't want to risk the never, so I thought I would slowly try and head home taking one panda at a time. Until this happened. Jeez, this is going to take forever. Are you kidding me? Like it just took me over an hour to get here and you just rolled into a cactus. Seriously, tell, tell me that didn't happen. After realizing that the overworld would just take too long, I decided to make a nether portal and then make a tunnel all the way through the nether back to my home portal so that we could travel safely. Now, 
Now it was quicker than I expected. I mean, it did take me like three to four hours, but it will be handy having closer access to the jungle now. Come on, buddy, just through here. And let's quickly get you back in a boat. There we go. And now we just have about a thousand blocks, maybe a little bit less to travel, but it certainly beats going through the overworld. Finally, we are back at base and so close now. Yes, we finally did it and I'm sticking a name tag on you straight away so that you don't despawn. After the longest journey ever, I finally have both pandas and also a baby back at home now. And I seriously hope that none of the other mobs take as long as these guys because that was a trek and a half. Okay, I really need a change of scene now and away from hunting the animals, so let's get to work on that panda enclosure. I started the panda enclosure by building some custom trees to make them feel right at home. Now I've always felt like the jungle gives off some Japanese vibes, so I built a Tory gate and decorated the enclosure. I used mangrove wood and blackstone bricks as they really complement each other well and worked especially well with the Japanese theme. I added plenty of bamboo and then finished off the pen by texturing the walls. And now that the babies have all grown up, I have four pandas, four mules and four donkeys. So I guess next we should get them into their pens. Starting with the pandas, which we can easily trick with some bamboo. And of course, now they're in there, I'll let them have some so that we can trigger love mode. There we go. Six pandas should be plenty. Oh, and of course, let's not forget to name tag the babies as well. Now we can move the donkeys and the mules and thankfully we can put these guys on leads. So that makes life much easier. Well, they look pretty happy in there, so I'd say that's another job well done. Now I guess I should probably repair my tools as they're not looking so good. That's looking much better. And now I think it's time that we worked on these pathways as it's got to look a bit better than this grass. Wow, what a difference that makes. I mean, we could probably do with a little bit more texturing, but overall, I think that looks great. And now the paths are in place, I think I want to start working on the parrot's enclosure, which is going to use a bunch of copper, so hopefully enough of it has oxidized by now. But first, let's grab a ton of these. I'm also going to need plenty of cactus. And now we can make some cyan dye and craft a whole bunch of cyan glass. And that should be plenty. Now I have been gathering and placing a whole bunch of copper on and off for a while now and it looks like we should be ready to get this enclosure all built. For this build I really wanted to change things up a little bit and make use of the oxidized copper. My goal was to build a kind of greenhouse style enclosure with a little bit of a tropical vibe. And the copper made a great change which really made the build stand out amongst everything else with the cyan glass really helping bring the whole build together. For the roof I went with a kind of dome shape with an apex at the front and back just to add a little bit of detail. And I must admit this build used a lot more copper than I expected. As for the inside I wanted to keep everything colourful and bright so I used some moss for the grass and then added some jungle trees with plenty of flowers just to make it vibrant and give it that pop of colour. And look at that. Using the copper really breaks up the area from all of that wood and the red colour from the brick floor just really makes everything, I don't know, just inviting. You know, I think this might just be my new favourite build. But we are still a long way from done, so I still have a lot more work to do. But next up, we need some parrots. Luckily, I have seeds for days, weeks, months, maybe even years, so this shouldn't be a problem. But unfortunately, we can't breed them. So it looks like we're going to have to try and find them. Oh, this guy's on the lookout. Hmm. So where are all the parrots? Wait, was that? Ah, yes, it was. You want to be my friend, buddy? Come on, don't be greedy. And we have a new friend. Can I just pretend this guy's a parrot? I mean, he has wings and he likes seeds. Okay, maybe not. After searching for about an hour or two, things were going pretty good. I'd found three parrots 
And then this happened. I don't think so, buddy. No, no, no. You, no, you have got to be kidding me. Ah, like I have no words. Yes, it happened again. I'm guess I'm not so good at protecting animals in this game. It was back to the beginning. And this time it took a lot more seeds to make them my friend. Finally, after several hours again, I finally managed to get some back home safely. And I managed to convince them to sit nicely on top of the bird cages that I'd made earlier. Which finally made the parrot enclosure complete. At this point, I was eager to get back to building. With the next three enclosures being for the mushroom cow, the foxes and the ocelots. Starting with the mushroom enclosure, I switched out the grass for mycelium and decided to add a little pond. I didn't want to overwork this enclosure so I kept it fairly simple. Just added in a few custom mushrooms to match the mushroom island. I used some end rods and some mushroom blocks to make these mini mushrooms, which worked out as a great way to add a bit of light to the enclosure. Next up was the fox enclosure, which again I kept fairly simple. I used podzel and cool dirt to create a bit of a muddy forest fill and then built a small kind of burrow for the foxes to live in. I knew foxes could jump higher so I chose not to add any trees but I added some bushes instead and then placed a few berry bushes in for some detail. Finally I moved on to the ocelot enclosure where I went for a bit of a jungle vibe. I added in some more jungle trees and a small pond along with a small cliff for the ocelots to climb. Then I finished it off with lots of leaves and foliage. Now this place is really starting to feel more like a zoo. And I just love all the colours, it just looks so vibrant and colourful. Now, before I do anything else, I need some rockets. So, let's grab some sugar cane. And I only have two stacks left, so... Stocked again, but they won't last long. Now that I was stocked on rockets, I could return to the Mushroom Island, which was over 5,000 blocks away. Luckily, I managed to bring back some mushroom cows using a bow, which was surprisingly easy. Once they were in their enclosure, I headed off to find a tiger biome, where I found a couple of foxes that did give me a little bit of trouble, but I did manage to get them home safely. Once they were in their enclosure, I bred them to make a few more, as it was much easier than trying to gather some more. Finally, I headed back to the jungle for some ocelots, and these guys did not make it easy for me. I mean, somehow they kept getting off their leads, but after a lot longer than I cared to admit, I finally got a couple of them back home where I bred them as that was way easier than finding more. Oh, look how cute this little guy is. Cute, but man, are you guys a pain in the butt to actually get home, so I'm glad that's all done now. Oh yeah, and I also found a new addition on my journey, so say hello to Percy the Parrot. Anyway, I still have a whole bunch of enclosures to build and I will be needing a bunch more of the oxidized copper soon. So let's collect all of these. And I'll go ahead and place down another load. While they oxidize, let's work on the area up here where I think I'm going to have the bees, the alleys, the cats and maybe the polar bears in a cool little cave over there. So no time to rest. Let's do this. For the bees enclosure, I decided to continue with the spruce wood theme, but this time I made a kind of house style enclosure. I started by working in all of the framework and then added some trees inside. Now I must admit I was building this at like 4am in the morning and I was a little sleep deprived, so I completely forgot about the main roof. So I placed down the bees nest and I was a bit confused about how they kept escaping. After a while, I finally realized my mistake and I managed to fix it, after chasing them down of course. Next up I designed a fairly simple enclosure for the alley. I wanted it to look a little magical, so I added some amethyst blocks and crystals which really worked well. The cat enclosure was also fairly simple, following along with a similar design to the bee enclosure. Inside I added a little stairway to a little house and then some climbing poles and scratch pads for them to play on. Finally I moved on to the bear enclosure where I went for a kind of cold snowy cave design. I filled in the walls with snow and ice and I created a small pond so that the bears could have a swim. 
I then used some end rods to make some icicles for detail, which was a great way to add some light into the cave. And to finish off the enclosure, I added in a couple of custom trees and some bushes. Once that was all in place, I felt like the area still needed a little bit of detailing. So I built some custom trees, added some foliage and some flowers, and then finally finished off the center with a nice big water fountain, which really finished off all of the area. Oh my gosh, this place is just looking so cool now. And I'm not gonna lie, I think this is actually my favorite build that I have ever done. I mean, the enclosures up here fit so well with the landscape. But I must admit that the polar bear one is just my favorite. It just looks so cool. Although we are missing the animals. Except for the bees, of course, as they were in their hives. So I guess it's back to animal hunting. I started with the alley as I knew there was a couple close to my base at the pillager outpost. Now it wasn't easy with so many pillagers around, but I managed to release them from their cage, but one of them did get away. So to be safe, I put the other on a lead and quickly got him home safely. I did take a trip back to see if I could find the other one, and luckily he hadn't gone too far. After getting him home safely, I found some amethyst shards and made a jukebox, which I used to duplicate the alleys. They sure do love their music. I then went ahead and gathered up some cats, which I found from the local villages. Once I had a few, I took them home and bred them up for a few more. I might come back a little bit later and see if I can actually get all variants, which I think would be pretty cool. The polar bears on the other hand were a little bit tougher, as the adults wanted to attack me. I managed to get them back while in a boat without taking too much damage. However, second time round was much easier, as I realized it was just better to grab the babies and then they didn't attack me, so it was much easier to get them back. I ended up with six polar bears in total, so that was more than enough. And now, with all the animals in their pens, I want to do something with this kind of mountain area. And I think this is where I'm going to build the aquarium and have a big octopus on top. So I've got a bit of a cool idea for this one. So let's grab a few supplies and get to work. So the first thing I had to do was make some room for building. So I dug away a huge section of the mountain, which would make room for building the aquarium. While I was digging away the mountain, I decided to continue and make some room for a few more enclosures to the side of the aquarium. These would later be used to house the llamas, goats and the horses. With the area cleared, I started working on building the aquarium. I tried to keep the design fairly simple as the main focus was going to be on the octopus that was going to sit on top. For the main building, I used oxidized copper, smooth quartz and walled planks, which I gotta say worked very nice together. Next up was building the actual octopus, which wasn't easy so I did practice a few times in a creative world first, which certainly made it much easier. I used a combination of orange terracotta and acacia planks to give the design a bit of texture. I also used some glowstone for the eyes, which I covered with dark oak trapdoors. Now I did only build him with six tentacles, but my thoughts were the other two would be sticking back into the mountain behind him. At this point, I was kind of getting a little carried away with my building. So I continued working along and added in some more of the enclosures for the llamas, goats and horses. I kept these enclosures nicely decorated and made sure to place glass over the top of the goat enclosure as those guys can jump 10 blocks high so this would stop them from escaping. Once that was all done, I went ahead and added some custom trees on the cliff edge near the entrance and then decorated it with a bunch of bamboo just to finish the area. Wow, just look at this place now. I mean, it looks amazing, even if I do say so myself. Now that being said, this has taken me several weeks of work, but I must admit it has totally been worth the work, but we are still far from done. So let's finally move our horses into their new enclosure. Look at that, looks like they've settled in already. However, I do still need to get some goats and llamas. Plus, we have all the aquarium to finish as well. So I headed off to some nearby snow mountains and found some goats, which were pretty easy to transport back to the enclosure. I then went out to look for some llamas, and that's where the nightmare began. You see, I thought llamas spawned in savannah biomes. So I searched, and I searched, and I searched for two real-life days, traveling 
thousands of blocks and going through countless rockets. And finally, I got a bit fed up and I decided to take a bit of time out. So I went ahead and built a nice little garden area next to the entrance. I used azalea and moss to section off the garden with some nice hedges. I then made a simple pathway and then added some decorative table using scaffolding, which finished off with some flowers and a couple of small conifer style trees. And overall, I think it shaped up pretty good. Now, at this point, I decided that I would have another attempt at finding some llamas. And after doing a bit of research, I found out that on Java Edition, the llamas only spawn in savannah plateaus and windswept hill biomes. And after finally finding a savannah plateau, my luck had changed. However, it did take me several hours to get them back to base. And I cannot tell you how happy I was when I finally got them in their enclosure. Now, with that being said, everything on the outside at this point was looking beautiful. So it's now time to start working on the inside of the aquarium. First, I repaired my tools and then worked on gathering a few more materials. This included quartz, glowstone, sand, which I smelted into glass, some more oxidized copper, moss, and a bunch of corals. With the materials all gathered, I decided to start making a plan for the layout inside the aquarium. I then jumped straight in and covered the ceiling with cut copper and then finished the layout for the walls, dividing up all of the enclosures. It was looking a little bit dark, so I used glowstone in the ceiling for some lighting and then continued to extend the brick path all the way through the aquarium. At this point, this was about four weeks into building, so I was kind of getting really eager to get this project finished. I started with the squid enclosure as that was fairly simple. I used a combination of dirt textures for the base and then added some glass and filled in the tank of water. I used some sea pickles at the bottom for a bit of lighting and then added some kelp and seagrass for details. Once that was in place, I started laying down some sand in the dolphin and fish enclosures. I used glowstone around the edge for a bit of lighting and then placed in the glass and then used water buckets to fill up the enclosure. I moved on to corals where I made some interesting shapes and just tried to make the enclosure nice, colorful and bright, which I think it turned out really well. Next up was the turtle enclosure where I made a sort of pond area with two little beach islands. I added in some jungle trees, some leaves and then sectioned it off with some glass panes. It was simple, but it worked perfect for what I had in mind. I had a similar idea in mind for the frog enclosure, starting off by building up an island of mud and then added in some water, a few trees and then decorating it with some lily pads, drip leaf and azalea. For the axolotls, I made an island with clay and moss and then used mossy cobblestone and glow berries with a few leaves just to try and make it feel a bit more like a lush cave. Next, I moved on to the Strider, as the Strider is still a passive mob. I made it look a bit like the Never, with a kind of warped forest biome on one side and almost like a mini soul valley on the other side, separated with a bit of lava through the middle. I then went ahead and just added in a few details using some magma, fungus, twisting and hanging vines. Okay, so things are really starting to shape up. But before I show you too much, we need to get a few more mobs. So let's dig a hole down and out here, which should lead us to the ocean. I mean, this will probably be the easiest way to transport the dolphins and the squids to their enclosure. Now, if we just fill this with water, we should be able to bring the dolphins and the squids through here without too much trouble. Now, with the ocean so close to the zoo, I am sure that I have seen dolphins around here. Aha, there we go. Can I put you on a lead, though? Aha, I can. Cool. And if we just bring him through here, and I should just be able to pull him up here. Yes, and we have dolphin number one. Excellent. Let's call him Dolph, like Dolph Lundrum. Okay, let's find some more. So it did take me a little while, but I found three more. So hopefully we can get them back safely. Look at that. Perfect. Let's remove these and put the glass there to finish off the enclosure. Excellent. Transporting the squids was much tougher than the dolphins. So it did take me a lot longer to bring them back. However, finding and transporting the glow squids was even tougher. 
Luckily, there was a lush cave deep below the zoo, so I kind of found a good spawning spot, but it did take me a few attempts to get them back. And the stupid drowns did not make it any easier. Finally, after some trial and error, I did manage to bring back two glow squids. So I decided that I'd come back to the other two a little bit later on, as this has kind of been taking me a lot longer than I'd hoped. With the squids all in place, I removed the trapdoors and the enclosure was complete. I then moved on to searching for some frogs, which I found a small mangrove swamp where I found just one orange frog. But it didn't take me too long to transport him back home to the enclosure. So I headed off back out in search of a larger biome where I found another orange frog and many, many white frogs. So I transported them home and hoped that we might be lucky when we breed them and get the third and final green frog variant. The tadpoles took a while to change, but it did turn out that the enclosure was partly in a grove biome, which luckily gave me some green frogs meaning that we now have all three variants in the enclosure. Next up, it was turtle time. I thought rather than bringing back the turtles, it was probably easier just to get some eggs. And it turned out that getting the eggs was actually really easy, just by simply feeding the turtles some seagrass and just waiting for them to lay some eggs. So the breeding was actually pretty quick. However, hatching is certainly not fast. I mean, I waited and i waited and uh yeah it just turns out these duck guys take way longer than i'd thought so while i was still waiting for them to hatch i went to the nether to get the next mob first i'm gonna need a few of these and the striders are not the easiest mob to transport as they're pretty slow when they're not in lava but if i can get at least two of them back then i can breed them let's quickly make a fishing rod and now if we add some wolf fungus I think that's what these guys like. Oh yes, perfect. Let's also grab this guy. And now I have two, but it's pretty slow moving them. Finally, back at base, and I now have two of them in boats. So let's do this one at a time. Okay, we're almost there now. That's one. And finally, that's two. Quick, hop in the lava and warm up. Now, let's try breeding them. <laughs> Look at the baby, he looks so derpy. Okay, well they seem pretty happy, so let's now work on the fish tanks. For these guys, I can actually rename them while they're in the bucket, so I'll name them one by one by the type of fish they are, as they're all different. That's the tropical fish all done. Now I just need some salmon and cod, which should be easy enough. There we go, that's all the tropical fish, salmon and cod all in one tank. The puffer fish will be in a separate tank as they tend to kill the other water mobs. So you guys can go in here. And that's another one done. My gosh, the turtle eggs still haven't hatched yet. So onto the last one I guess, which is the axolotl. And I'm going to call these guys Axel. Let's place them down here. And I think we can breed these with a tropical fish. There we go, we got a little yellow one. Let's also breed these two. Which gives us... Hmm, did we get one? Oh yeah, look, there's another little one. Wow, and the strider grew up already, so let's quickly breed them one more time. And there we go, that is how I built the most insane zoo and aquarium in Minecraft Hardcore. Complete with every passive mob. And I don't think I missed any. Or did I? I guess all I need to do now is just uh, wait for the turtles to hatch. Come on.